Welcome to the Blue Pool near Reading. This fantastic fishery is one of Britain's best daytime big carp waters. It's home to hundreds of double figure carp, dozens of 20s and several 30 pounders. Under the strict instructions of master carp stalker Simon Scott, I'm travelling light for this programme with the minimum amount of gear. I've got to stay mobile. Now Simon's developed some fantastic stealthy techniques for catching carp within feet and even inches of the bank and I'm here to pick his brains and find out how he does it. My first challenge though is a slightly odd one. I've got to find this commando carp. Ah, here you are. I thought I'd find you in a jungle like this, Si. How are you doing? Any fish? Well, mate, yeah, there were, until you poached your rod out over the bushes and dumped your bucket with a thump, you clumsy oak. <laughs> How are you doing, right? Not too bad. Now, didn't you know that modern carping's all about shoving a bivvy up, crashing it on a bed chain, slinging your rods in the middle of the lake? Well, it might be for some people, Kev. For, for me, I like to get it right on the edge, set little traps, poke baits down the margins and stuff and it's much more exciting it's you know stealthy fishing and it can be very exposing why what's what's the good about the margins as opposed to well i know it's the fad to fish you know 150 160 yards out and that that it works for some people but for me the excitement is fishing in the edge the margins are the biggest feature on most lakes yeah. and you know when you get a fish to come in right down here and it's like right and you see it actually take up and yes i mean i mean come on yeah, it's the way to do it yeah anyway i baited this spot what we should do kev is head off and bait a couple more spots and see if we can't find ourselves some fish. OK, no problem. Thank you, Kev. Keep it quiet. See the, the movement's all. We're going in that direction, aren't we? We're going along, along there. Fingers crossed they're right off into those trees. Look, they're into this bay as well now. Yeah, not yet. Right then, here we are, the secret black bait bucket. Reveal its contents, Si. I couldn't do that, okay? Come on, I'd you've got to. i poke your eyes out. Well, that's a price I'll pay. Okay. We've got some pellets, a mixture of different pellets with me. So what are these, 14 mil halibuts, I presume, yeah? Yeah, that's correct, yeah. Your hook baits, presumably. Yeah, yep. and a few going as loose feed. Yep. Now these ones here, all these tiny ones, there's some microscopic pellets there. Are these your feed baits? Uh, yeah, that's right. What I'm trying to achieve is the fish rooting about in the gravel for the food, so that when they come across the bigger food items, they're like, there's a bit. Yeah. Obviously, one of those bigger food items is going to have a size six attached to it. This is going to be the target bait. That's spot on, yeah. What else is in there, Simon? Um, we've got some boilies and some paste. Again, Kev, um, you know, just giving me a few more little uh, tricks up my sleeve if things aren't going well. Do you use them whole or do you crush them up? I tend to crush these up. These are quite soft fish meal boilies. Yeah. Uh, and again, I'm trying to get as much smell into the water and into the gravel as possible to get the fish working. And that's what the paste does too. Yeah, they do stink. I can confirm that. So, so I know that we've confirmed that you stink. How are we going to bait them up? Are we going to go to one swim and bait one and wait for the carp to come to us? Or are we going to go round the lake and, and go and find them? Well, I mean, you could obviously bait one spot and sit and wait, but to be honest, in keeping with you know, my sort of approach of angling is to, to farm the whole lake. Let's work our way around, mm -hmm. you know, put a bit of bait here, a bit under that tree, by the lilies, work our way around and see... What's like roving there. for chub on a river. Exactly. And you're just going to throw the bait in? How are you going to put it in? Yeah, I mean, you could throw the bait in. This, this fine stuff, though, it, it, it's OK to throw an underarm, but you, you tend to end up with a bit of a spread. You've got a mixture of sizes, so I tend mm -hmm. to use um, either a small spot like this and just swing it under the rod and yep. position it over the spot and it'll empty its contents. Alternatively, I use a bait dropper. Now just show us how you use a bait dropper and uh, load it up and swing it in the swim. Right, what I do, Kev, we put the small pellets in, so even these fine pellets won't fall out. Shut the trap door. It's a great way of fishing, it's great fun. Now this again shows the accuracy. You've got to place the bait. Even though you could throw the bait in, you know, you actually prefer to make sure you get it on yeah. an absolute sixpence. That's right, Kev. I mean, I, I want... Let's be honest, we want to see that fish get caught, don't we? Yeah. Today? We're yeah. not here just to catch one out in the middle. So yep. I want to set tiny little traps right in the edges. That's yeah. about a foot deep there, maybe a little bit more. Super. Lower it down, and that dropper's going to open when I touch down. There she goes. Do you see the door go there, Kev? Yeah. Look at it all rolling out. Lovely little trap, perfect for Mr and Mrs Carp. Great little spot here, Kev. Yeah, alongside those rushes. Just now. under these reeds. Over the next two hours, Simon took me on a tour of the Blue Pool There's and explained spot. the spots he liked to yeah. prime with his pellet mixture. Some spots were overgrown parts of the pool where he dropped his bait tight under overhanging trees. Here, Kev. Drop it 
drops off a bit down there, so we'll put a little bit on the drop off. Other spots he targeted were near marginal weed beds or in secluded corners of the lake. But some of his bait went into some very strange places, right alongside open swims or even along featureless strips of bankside. He was clearly giving himself a variety of swims to target, one or all of which could produce the goods. see what happens. If not, we might try changing the hook bait slightly and repositioning it. Oh, there's a couple of good fish coming through now. Oh, the old pulse is ticking along now. They're coming really close now. There's a couple of fish coming round again. Oh, no, again, they must be, must have sussed the boilie out, definitely. There's still a fair few fish down there. Here we go, come on, come on. Yep, yeah, here we go. Okay, we're in. We're in, mate. What a tape. What a tape. I Mental. saw it on the camera. What an incredible catch that was. Let's have a look at it again. And just watch the lead move as it picks up the bait. Here we see the fish. He's coming in. He's coming in. He sees the boiler. Holmes in. Sucks it up. There goes the lead. He's hooked. That's the point of a bolt rig. Oh, we're up again. This is proper fly-by-wire fishing. This is good oh, God. Oh, it's the common. In the end, it was so dark with carp down there, okay? It was very oh, difficult sure. to see which, which one, one we were going to catch. <laughs> oh, it'll do. I tell you what, it might be that common that had the little splits in his dorsal. We see him all day, haven't we? Oh, he's a good fish. <laughs> Go on, my son. Oh, it's that, it's that common. It is, the, it it's is that one. He's got a split in his dorsal. We've been possible. seeing umpteen of them coming in, coming in, and there's just this one common got a couple of little nicks in his dorsal fin. Oh, we've got him. <laughs> Oh, come on. Come on, boy. Come on. Get in there! Come on! <laughs> well done, son. That'll do. Top man. <sighs> wow. Let's have him out. Oh, yes. Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> Nearly. It's all that pellet he's had today, Kev. He's full of beans. And I am now getting wet feet. Excellent. <laughs> Serve you right. <laughs> but do I care? Not a bit, I tell you. What a fish. Let's have a look at him. Oh, yes. Oh, fantastic, Kev. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so pleased we've got one. <laughs> you worked hard for that. That was a cracking little trap set, wasn't it? Yeah. It goes to show the pulling power of those pellets. It really does. Let's have a look at him then. They're big. What, 15, 16 yeah, pound? Very I mean, long one, isn't it? We're they? calling 15, 16 pound. Let's have a look at that dorsal. Let's see if it was that one. Oh, definitely. Look that at that. Is it, yeah. That fish has been having pellets off us all day. It had, it had two little nicks. One there, one there. Yeah. He's a real old warhouse. Look at that for a paddle, mate. She's been in a few times, definitely. What a beautiful fish. Spot on. Well, Kev, now yeah. it's your turn. Welcome to day two of our margin 
stalking expedition with Simon Scott. It's a much brighter day today. There's a little bit of an algal bloom as well, so the water's coloured up a little bit. We've already put some bait in some good-looking areas. I reckon we'll do all right. Is one careful? Yep, got it. I see it creeping up. What we've actually got is a line lying across the bottom of the lake, over any contours, so it's not running tight through the water. To her rod tip, the line's quite slack too. There's nothing for the fish to see or spook on as they come into the swim. We've placed the bait right behind the bush that Simon's been baiting. Now it's just a case of waiting for these little shadows to move in. We can't see the fish precisely because of the slight tinge of colour. What we can see is the shadow, the outline of them roughly. The bottom moves. There's one there now. Just coasting through. Now we've just got to wait for them to find that bait. I think what I'm going to do, Kev, I'll sneak off with the bucket and prime a couple more spots. You've got the net, you've got the unlucky man. Yep. Give us a squeak if you get one. No worries, well done. Good luck. See you, mate. Whilst I was left watching the carp in my swim hoover up the small pellets we had laid as a trap, Simon quietly stalked some of the more remote blue pool swims that held some very large fish. Using fry crumb pellet and crush boilies, he laid several traps around the margins. His polarising glasses really are essential for this type of fishing. They allow him to spot carp more easily as they cut through the surface glare. They also allow him to spot areas of polished gravel. These are the sure signs that carp have been on the feed. He's got it, he's got it. We're in. Simon. Oh, that was sudden. It worked, mate. You beauty. It worked. <laughs> oh, Simon's just wandered off just to try and bait some other swims. And literally, there was no prior warning. Off it went, like a rocket. <laughs> oh, my son, come on! He's <laughs> doing oh. you. Wicked. Oh. Can't beat that noise of the clutch, can you? <laughs> it's hard work, this is. You just concentrate. I'll do my best to knock him off with the net. Yeah, but I expect nothing <laughs> less, obviously. Oh, well done. All right, it's looking promising for another spot as well, Kev, so that's yeah. good. You yeah. see fish? Yeah. It's interesting though, this um, priming spots with little bits of bait now and every now and again really shortens up the, the sort of catching period, doesn't it? Because you're getting them there when you're, you're not even fishing. Yeah, and they're getting the confidence up, you know, they're coming in and having a little bit of here, there, yeah. rubbing about and they go off. And as long as you're not too clumsy when you get the rig in and you can quietly drop it on the spot, then, yeah. you know, they may have been feeding on it for two hours and as far as they're concerned, then it's free, you know, yeah, there's, there's no hooks attached. It's safe food, there's no yeah. line in the water, no nothing. Yeah, it definitely pays off. I mean, it's the principle of pre-baiting anywhere, isn't it? Yeah. You're buying the fish's confidence, really. Yeah. There he comes, he's coming towards the surface. He's a hefty fish. Yeah, he's got a bit of a gut on him, this one. Yeah, he's, uh, he's quite broad, isn't he? Yeah. He's uh, modelled himself on me. Hmm. Yeah, he's. Uh, the gut, you mean? Yeah, I've been eating some pies. Oh, here he comes. <laughs> he's rolled over the line, I think I can see it. Yeah. Just round his peck. Yeah, he's just rolled over the line. Oh. Tempted to go for a lunge yeah, there, Yeah, Here we go, here we go, here we go. Got him. Yes, well done, Kev. Excellent. <laughs> Top man, Simon. Well done, Good sir. work with the old net. Yeah, oh, yes. that's a nice fish. He's a pretty fish, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, that's a lovely looking fish. He's a lovely fish. There we go. Margin, margin stalking. We've done the ambush in the margins. Excellent. Oh, oh, yeah. way. Well done. Lovely fish. Let's have a look at him. Where's that hook? Oh, there we go. Nicely in the bottom lip. Right. Well done. Definitely a male fish, this one, Kev. See the, just the remnants of the spawning tubercles, the little white spots yeah. on the gill plate there, and along the leading edge of that fin. That's why he was a bit of a rucker, I reckon. Right. Yeah. Okay, let's what a cracking a fish. What a beauty. And there we go. Look at that. Oh, perfectly oh. conditioned. Absolutely gorgeous fish. What this shows really, Simon, even on a horribly hot morning like this, when all the fish are basking on the surface and you think, never catch them yeah, on the bottom on a day like this. Never, no chance. A little bit of pre-bait, and there you go. The old pre-bait in the margin stalking does it again. Brilliant. Oh, 
nice, but while I was playing my fish and salmon was off around the lake baiting up, this was one of the spots you found, wasn't it? That's right. I walked into the swim and I see a couple of fish creeping around the bottom of this old oak tree that's lined in the water here. Now, why do you think they're coming here? Um, you've got a no-fishing bank on the left there, and this is the first swim that they'd reached off, coming off of that, and they, they seem to creep around the corner and then pile out towards the island. It's a very good spot. The perfect margin sanctuary, then, you see? Yeah. Now, then, before we get fishing, let's have a look at your rig, because uh, it's very simple, actually, isn't it? Yeah, and we're not, we're not trying to make things too complicated here, Kev. Now, you've got some thick line here. Now, this is a weighted carp leader, isn't it? Why do you use that? Firstly, it's, it's very strong. It gives me um, abrasion resistance against the zebra mussels, the sharp stones, bits mm -hmm. of grit and stuff, and snags. Okay. And secondly, being weighted, it sits on the bed of the lake, so it keeps it out of the way of the fish, which is important. These it's fish, not obvious, yeah. Yeah, these fish definitely are looking out for Lines. We saw that, didn't we? Yeah. No, then, a strange lead there. What's going on there? Yeah, a little bit organic, this one, Kev. Um, right. This is a lead that I've coated myself. Uh, I've used bits of sand and grit glued into plastic. Mm -hmm. uh, by using melted plastic, they stuck, stuck it in there. Yep. Um, it makes the, makes the lead blend with the lake bed much better. Mm -hmm. um, and also, I leave them in the, in the pond at home. So they, they smell nice. uh, of, of lake bed, pond so bed. As natural as to a pebble as you can make yeah, it. <laughs> we do our best, yeah. Now, a very short hook link here, probably, what, five inches or so? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. We don't, we don't want to give the fish too much space. OK. And you've learned from yesterday's little uh, experiment <laughs> that we did, where we saw those fish bolt off the, off the boilie. A 14 mil halibut pellet, yeah? Yeah, that's right, Kev. I mean, we, we, it was obvious yesterday. Those fish weren't mm. happy to feed on boilie, a boilie over the top of that pellet. So we put more 14 mil halibut pellets in the mix today as we put it out, and we're going to use one on the hair. OK. Well, let's uh, creep in. Are we going to go straight into the swim, or...? Or what? But we need to keep ourselves right down. We're expecting these fish to be right round the end of that old oak log. So yeah. I think we should take a more roundabout route and creep in there. Right, Kev, what we're going to try and do is feed that round out there and bring it round in a loop and place it on that gravel like that. Boom. Perfect. So the bait has dropped beyond the lead. That's and then right. the leader and the line come back towards us. That's, that's spot on. I didn't want to just drop it in a heap on the bottom. I want to lay it out nicely. And it's vitally important to get that black leader. You see it there off the rod tip? Yeah. We're going to bring it right into the bank. So it's just drop it down there. and then put the rod down here. So yeah, it's right out of the way of the fish. It's on the bed of the lake. It's so, so important. So the fish are coming from the deeps. And as they come from the deeps towards the shallows, the first thing that they come across, the hook bait. Hopefully, yeah. I mean, we might get the old one creep round on the inside and go, oh, there's a leader. Yeah, but fingers crossed. That, that's, I'm pretty pleased that's gone in well. Great. Ooh, come on. Third fish lucky, Kev. We've had two crackers. I have to say, I can see why this guy's addicted to this kind of fishing. It's fantastic. We can actually see these fish just ghosting in. And one thing, Kev, you know, as you know, if you take, take your glasses off for a moment, you can't see it. <laughs> you can't see a thing, can you? The ripple. The white ripple just takes it away. Oh, this is what it's all about, Kev. Oh, here he is. Here he is. That's a pale fish. Yeah, it's the pale one. Yeah, you can oh, see, just see one or two scales on his back. Come on. Kev's right on it. Yeah. Oh. I booked him for that stress management course tomorrow. This is mental. Let's do it. I mean, again, here we go. Here yeah, we go. Come, come on, right on, on it. There's two on. of them. Breathe, breathe. Remember to breathe. <laughs> One on the left is swinging around. Come on, go now. on, go on. Right on, it. Right right on the money. Do the lunge on it. Go on, they're competing. Go, 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 go. Oh. Ring, Kev, ring. Oh, it's ring. Yes. Oh. Oh. Well, that was absolutely fantastic. I don't know which one it was, sir. Si. Oh, I've got no idea, Kev. I don't know which one. They both shot off. I'm shaking like time. a leaf, though. <laughs> I have no idea whether it was the one from the left or the one from the right no, that got it. That was just carp suit, wasn't it, for yeah. a second there? But you, it was that competitive thing, I'm sure, that one of them just said, I'm having that. I'll get down off here, Kevin, yeah. before I fall in the pond. God, I'm over, the old clutch was a bit loose there. Oh, oh how exciting. That was close, <laughs> wasn't it? Crikey. Oh, the jibbering wreck. Oh, Which one have we got? lovely common. It's one of the commons. Yeah, he's that deep mahogany colour. Oh. Oh, yes. Here he comes. Oh, he's a nice fish. Come on, boy. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, Mr. Scott, <laughs> put it there. That's fantastic. <laughs> no worries. That's a proper oh. margin ambush, that is, folks, and you've seen it all the way. Fantastic. There you go. There's your fish. All right. Spot on. Let's have Let's a look, have a look. It, shall we? Yeah. Here he comes. Mid-double. Upper double, beautiful fish, broad across the back, isn't he? 
I'd say it's a little bit bigger than your mirror. Yeah, well, obviously. Yeah, obviously, got a bit, yeah. She's oh, got yeah. A bit of width to her, isn't she? Makes you wonder, though, how big some of those bigger ones that we're watching were. Yeah, were didn't absolute it? cracker, isn't it? This is what you get with margin stalking. You get to see the fish, take your bait. You can't beat that for excitement. With the scores on the doors, 2-1 to Simon, we both decided to split up in search of more margin feeding carp. I crept back into the tiny hidey hole swim where I'd met Simon yesterday. What's more, I've managed to nick one of his six foot stalking rods too. I was straight into another carp, hooked only 12 inches from the bank. But this time, well, this time I was on my own. What a cracking spot though, right in here, that's what I put just down here. If you tried this with a, a typical 11 or 12 foot, 13 foot carp rod, you'd have no chance, you wouldn't be able to control it. You won't be able to lift the rod. Look, I can bring the rod completely vertical when I need to. Oh, here he comes. Let me just get the net ready. Sometimes you can actually net them under the water a little bit before they're actually ready. And you can see them. You can sometimes have a little bit of a swipe at them. Here he comes. Here he comes. Oh, got him. Oh, yes. Get in there! Oh, yes. Bit chuffed about that. One that she might have gathered. Oh, he's a big fish. Oh, that six foot rod hasn't done Did bad, I hear has a it? scream, Mr. Green. <laughs> I'm afraid. I turned my back for a moment to go and put a bit more bait in your oh, next no. spot for you, and I've, you go and bag one. I've got no scruples. You should know that by now, Simon. It's got to be 20, 21 pound, isn't it? 20, 21. He's a very broad fish. Thick set across the back. What a magnificent carp. I've caught this on a little tiny six foot rod, your rod, a magnificent tool, I have to <laughs> I'll say. I'll claim half of it. Yeah, yeah, you can have it. I'll give you £10. <laughs> it's um, within inches of the bank, just down here. The bait's only been in a short while, half an hour tops, and this is the result. If you've never thought of giving margin carp fishing a chance, surely this is all the proof you'll ever need. What a fantastic day, thanks, sir. No worries. It's time to go home, Kev.